Hi everyone, welcome back to the ITN Psychology YouTube channel. Today we are going to be starting with chapter number 4 of Psychology 12th grade that is Cognitive Processes. Before we start, I would like to tell you that we have completed the first three chapters that include the concepts and the discussion for exercise solutions. The playlist for them will be mentioned in the description. And if you are an IT student, you can view the videos for the four chapters out of the six chapters in IT that again include the concepts explanation along with thorough discussion of exercise solutions. And after uh, our syllabus is completed, by mid October or some or uh, end of October, I will be discussing the projects or the journal part in the SOPs for IT. So let's continue. We'll start with chapter number four, cognitive processes. Here we have been given with the introductory part of what we are going to be learning in this chapter. And out of this, I'll just tell you what has been removed for students appearing for boards in their 2021. So for cognitive processes on page 38, unit 4.4.2 has been removed, that is types of thinking. And on page number 40, unit 4.5.2 processes of learning has been removed. So you, this unit and this unit have been removed for students appearing boards in the year 2021. So here we start with our learning objectives, read, the, read these as this, these might be important and the activity one, please discuss this activity with your friends to get an efficient answer for this activity. So here let's start with the introductory part, 4.1 introduction. Cognitive processes are all those higher level functions of the brain by which we become aware of the, of and understand the world around us. Cognitive processes are studied in a branch of psychology called cognitive psychology. The processes like sensation, attention, perception, learning, memory, forgetting, thinking, problem solving, reasoning, decision making, etc. are the examples of cognitive processes. In this chapter, we are going to study few of these cognitive processes. So here we start with Unit 4.2, that is attention. Unit 4.2.1 uh, says meaning and definitions of attention. So we'll learn what does attention actually mean. We continuously sense many stimuli from our surroundings through our sense organs. However, we do not become aware of all of them at one particular time. We focus and become aware of only few stimuli from them. Therefore, attention is considered as the selective process. Many psychologists have defined attention in various ways. Some of the definitions of attention are as follows. The two given are according to Guildford. Attention is the process of focusing on one or few objects, persons or situations from among many from the field of awareness, from, from your field of view. So it depends on, on what you can aim your attention towards. Then we have the second pointer or the second definition of attention given to us by Norman Mim. Uh, uh, attention is the mental process of bringing few stimuli into the center of awareness out of many stimuli present. So these were the definitions of attention given to us by three psychologists, sorry, two psychologists. Then we have the do you know box, this is important. Intensity of stimulus, size of stimulus, repetition of stimulus, movement of stimulus are some of the objective factors affecting attention. Similarly, interest, motive, mindset, attitudes, etc. are some of the subjective factors affecting attention. Then we start with unit 4.2.2, aspects of attention. There are various aspects of attention. Some of them are as follows. So here we have been given with four aspects of attention. The first one is span of attention. Second one is distraction of attention, division of attention. And the last one is fluctuation of attention. Span of attention. Span of attention can be described as the total number of stimuli that we can become clearly aware of in a single glance. Our span of attention is very limited. 
For a normal adult, the span of attention varies between seven to eight digits or alphabets. Further, we'll be given an example of how or why a post postal pin code or vehicle number is limited to seven to eight digits. This is the reason. The factors like age, intelligence, practice, experience, habits, etc. may affect the span of attention. For example, due to practice, the span of attention of a telephone operator or a typist may be greater than of an ordinary individual. So this was our span of attention. Then we continue to distraction of attention. After focusing on a specific stimulus, attention drifts towards another stimulus due to some external or internal difference, sorry, disturbance. This is known as the distraction of attention. Many external factors such as intensity, size, movement, etc. of stimuli may distract attention. For example, while studying, you, sorry, your attention may get suddenly distracted due to a film song played in a high volume by your neighbors. Sometimes internal factors like disturbed physical or psychological state, lack of interest, mental set can also cause distraction of attention. For example, your attention may be distracted if you have a stomach ache. So this was a distraction of attention showing how your mind is diverted away from what you're doing and what is actually important for you to do by some medial issues. Then we have our activity number two. Discuss this with your friends and, or uh, just verify your answers with your uh, faculty to get an efficient answer here. Then we continue to the third uh, aspect that is the division of attention. We observe people doing two things simultaneously like reading newspaper while eating or knitting while watching TV. In a true sense, individual cannot divide attention to two tasks simultaneously. In both these given examples, the individual is performing one task mechanically while paying attention fully to the other task. For example, eating or knitting is done mechanically while the person is paying attention fully to the other task like reading newspaper or watching TV. If a person needs to pay attention to both tasks simultaneously, then it results to increase in mistakes, decrease in efficiency, confusion, etc. For example, if a person is asked to read a newspaper and thread a needle simultaneously, the person will not be able to do these both tasks simultaneously without any mistake. So this was our division of attention. Here we have our activity 3 based on our division of attention. So just attempt this so that you can get a better overview of division of attention. Then we continue to our next aspect that is the fluctuation of attention. Attention keeps oscillating like the pendulum of the clock. We cannot pay attention to a single stimulus for a long period of time. Our attention shifts towards other stimulus for a fraction of time and comes back to the original stimulus. This is known as the fluctuation of attention. The factors like fatigue, low interest, attractiveness of other stimulus, etc. may lead to fluctuation of attention. For example, when you pay attention to what your teacher is teaching, your attention temporarily shifts to a friend sitting beside you or to a pune standing in the corridor and again you pay attention to what the teacher is teaching. So this is what is fluctuation of attention. Then we continue to unit 4.3 perception. We have been given with a, an activity here. Please attempt this and discuss this with your faculty. Here we will start with unit 4.3.1 meaning and definition of perception. In day to day life, we can easily sense different objects, sounds, textures, tastes, odors, etc. to which we have paid attention and can name them. Thus in understanding the world around us, sensation occurs first followed by the attention and finally interpretation of the stimulus by the brain. This process of interpretation of stimulus is known as, the, as perception. Interpretation of any stimulus requires past experience. Thus, perception can be defined as the process of assigning meaning 
to the information received about the environment based on the past experiences. So this was our meaning and the definition of perception in our daily life. Then we continue to our next subunit that is 4.3.2 phenomena associated with perception. Some of the phenomena associated with the perception are as follows. The first one given to us is top down and bottom up processing. Here we have our activity just answer this so that you can get a overview of our first phenomena. So I will we'll just read this because this contains important info what are top down and bottom up processing. Look at the following boxes and try to understand top down and bottom up processing. Most of you have you must have perceived third stimulus given above as letter B instead of number 13. This happens because of top down processing. Top down processing if we pay attention to each of our senses at all times our senses would be overwhelmed. Therefore many times our brains you sorry our brain uses the context of our general knowledge while perceiving a particular stimulus this process is called a top down processing when we utilize top down processing our ability to understand information is influenced by the context in which it appears then we have our next example of bottom up processing most of you must have received perceived the third stimulus above, given above as a number 13 here this happens because of bottom up processing bottom up processing many times our per perceptual experience is based entirely on the sensory stimuli and is not influenced by any context in which it appears in such situations we take it in energy from the environment and convert it into neural signals sensation and then try to interpret in perception this process is called bottom up processing bottom up processing is a process that starts with an incoming stimulus and works upwards until a representation of the object in sorry is formed in our brain so now we continue to our next phenomena that is laws of perceptual organization our brain has tendencies to organize our sensations as a meaningful whole this was explained for the first time by a german psychologist max Wertheimer. in 1923 in form of laws of perceptual organization some of the laws of perceptual organization are as follows so here we have been provided with four laws that are the first one is law of proximity law of similarity law of continuity law of closure so here we start with our first law sorry our second uh, law of proximity According to this law of perceptual organization, the stimuli that are near to each other are perceived together than stimulus that are far away from each other. Look at the following examples. I'll just scroll up so that you can see the examples. So the, this, this is our for, first example for our first law, that is the law of proximity. In this figure, we perceive pairs of dots in each line because the dots which are near to each other are perceived together. So instead of perceiving a line of dots, generally a line of four pairs of dots is perceived. So then we continue to our second law, that is the law of similarity. According to this law of perceptual organization, the stimulus that are similar to each other are perceived together than stimuli, stimuli that are dis distinct from each other. Look at the following example. In this figure, we perceive four alternate vertical lines each of circles and cross as similar stimuli are perceived together generally we do not perceive four horizontal lines each having circles and crosses in alternate alternate sequence then we have our third law that is the law of continuity according to this law of perceptual organization this is a tendency to perceive a stimulus in continuation according to its established direction. According to this law, when 
two stimuli intersect, continuation of each stimulus is perceived apparently. In this figure, a straight vertical line and a straight horizontal line are perceived together as a letter L. And a cutting line is perceived separately as a line following the smoothest path. Generally, we do not perceive here four different lines going in different directions. Then we continue to our next law, that is the law of closure. Law of closure. According to this law of perceptual organization, there is a tendency to perceive an incomplete stimulus in a complete manner. Our brain fills up the gaps in, in incomplete stimulus and we perceive it as a meaningful figure. In this figure, we fill in the gaps and perceive it as a triangle and square. Generally, we do not perceive here and sorry, here the three or four separate lines going in different directions. So this was our introductory part of uh, chapter number 4 cognitive processes. The next part will be coming up soon. To, uh, today we had we have learned unit 4.1 the introduction, 4.2 that is the attention, 4.3 perception and which included the laws of perceptual organization and we had learned different aspects of attention as well. So please revise after, uh, as the next video will be crucial and thank you for watching. You've been a lovely audience. Please like, share and subscribe. If you have any doubts pertaining to the topics taught in this video or topics taught in previous videos, you can join the telegram group for doubts via the link given in the description. And if you want to support the channel, please follow me on Patreon. I will be posting exclusive notes for either subjects and exercise solutions PDFs on Patreon. Thank you for watching.